Hi everyone, it's Grace. Welcome back to my channel. In the last two videos, I provided you with the data in Florida about housing price growth and rental growth as of February 2022, and the hottest zip codes where the home equity and rental growth are spiking. So make sure to check out those two videos. In today's video, we're going to discuss a very important perimeter that you just can't miss when forecasting a housing crash. Before we begin, remember to subscribe to my channel and click on the bell button so you get notified immediately when new videos are uploaded. Also, feel free to give this video a thumbs up if you find it useful. Besides looking at indicators such as prices, trends, and the Fed rate hike, we don't really know what's behind the home equity value. We know that the market has a lot of liquidity right now, so there is no shortage of cash. But real estate is still one of the highly leveraged tools that most people still have to use mortgage to buy. So there are two value structures in a property that you should know. One is the growth of home equity driven by the market price and the growth of home loans driven by buyer demand and low mortgage rate. There is a key difference here. Are we assuming that the equity growth is faster than loan growth like this one or the loan growth is faster than equity growth like this one? Because that will be the core difference between 2008 and now. And the other value structure is based on a loan portion and how fast the mortgage repayment is crawling over it. The two structures tell us the status of the mortgage loan performance and whether we will crash proof if a housing crash should happen. After the extremely painful experience of the subprime mortgage crisis back in 2008, there have been a series of governmental policies as well as actions that monitor the status of the mortgage loan performance. And the Federal Housing Finance Agency uses a simple method to collect data about mortgaged properties in terms of their loan to value ratio. And that is the key component when we evaluate the two value structures. First, let's take a look at the southeastern part of the country, which is among the popular Sunbelt State real estate markets since the pandemic. The LTV ratios are divided into six tiers. Blue is less than or equal to 60%, which is a very low LTV. Green is 60 to 70%, yellow is 70 to 80%, and the standard LTV line is at 80% because conventional lenders usually allow borrowers to put down 20%, and then orange is 80% to 90%, red is 90 to 100%, and then purple is greater than 100%, which is very rare. I'm actually surprised to find that all the states in the Southeast have more than 50% less than 60% LTV, which means that more than 50% of the people who took out individual mortgage loans to buy properties put down more than 40%. When I read news about the mortgage rate coming down to the lowest 2.65% last year and a lot of first time home buyers coming in, I assume that there should be a lot of mortgage loans, especially during the eviction and forbearance moratorium debacle last year. But that's not the case at all. Florida has over 61% of mortgage loans at LTV less than 60%. Georgia is at 57%, Alabama at 50%, Tennessee at 60%, South Carolina at 53%, and North Carolina at 59%. This basically means that more than 50% of the properties with mortgages can hold up to 40% price crash if, say, something really bad happens tomorrow. The green area has LTV from 60 to 70%, and that's a very strong LTV. All the six states have around 20% of all mortgage properties at 60 to 70% LTV. So just by eyeballing the colors here, you can tell that around three quarters of the properties can withhold 30% price crash. And here's another important thing about LTV at the current moment. In my honest opinion, 80% LTV probably doesn't work because taxes, HOA fees, and insurance grow so drastically because of price growth and inflation. They're elevating the monthly payment and eroding the loan crawling ability of mortgage payment, which is roughly 5-10% to every year. This can be explained by the rent lower than PITI if you only put down 20%. I did a very thorough calculation and comparison between rent and PITI in one of my past videos. I strongly recommend that you check out that video here before you proceed. That video explains that if you want to break even, you'll need to put down at least 30% to keep the LTV level at less than 70%. Just to be conservative, I don't think 80% LTV is enough, and that's why I marked yellow in a map. In 2022, I will probably say a safe standard LTV should be 70% instead of 80%. And then let's extend the map to the Gulf Coast. Texas and New Mexico's LTV structures are similar to Georgia and South Carolina at very crash resilient levels. 
Texas has 74% of mortgage properties as 70% or less LTV, and New Mexico has 78% of those resilient properties. Mississippi, Arkansas, and Louisiana are a little bit worse off than Texas and New Mexico in terms of LTV less than 70%. And less than 50% of the properties in these three states have LTV levels at 60% or less. Another risk factor is that Louisiana has 5% of 90% plus LTV and Mississippi has 3% of 90% plus LTV. These are super risky LTV levels that are very easy to go underwater if anything catastrophic happens right away. I think the map is going to be really helpful because it's kind of like a simple stress test that shows you where the mortgage market is at right now. And most importantly, you can use it as a reference when you're deciding how much to put down when you're buying a property this year. And then let's take a look at the West Coast. The LTV structure on the West Coast is very different from the South. Besides Nevada, which has 60% of the properties with 60% or less LTV, all other states, including Arizona, California, Oregon, and Washington, have close to three quarters of the properties with 60% or less LTV. Only a very small fraction of the properties in these four states have LTV greater than 80%. Nevada still has 10% of 80 to 90% LTV and 12% of 70 to 80% LTV. So the risk factors are resting in those mortgages. Out of all five states on the West Coast, greater than 90% LTV is practically non-existent in Arizona and Washington, and they are the most crash resilient states. And then let's move on to the Rocky Mountains. It's interesting that more than 97% of properties in Idaho have 70% or less LTV, and that's an extremely crash-proof indicator. Utah is very similar to Arizona, so they're also highly resilient. Montana is close to Oregon. Colorado has 81% of the properties with 70% or less LTV that can withhold 30% price crash. And then in Wyoming, we're seeing that the crash resiliency dropping down a little bit with 70% of the properties with 70% or less LTV. So the LTV structures in the Rocky Mountains are a little bit scattered. And then the Midwest area also has a mixed pattern. Most of the states have more than 50% properties of 60% or less LTV and more than 20% 60 to 70% LTV. But I'll point out a couple of states with unusual patterns. North Dakota is probably the least resilient in the Midwest because it only has 45% properties at 60% or less LTV. And the yellow, orange, and red tiers that are vulnerable to being underwater are higher than other states. The other two states that pose similar pattern as North Dakota are Iowa and Illinois. And lastly, let's take a look at the states in the Northeast. The states that have close to 70% of the properties with 60% or less LTV include New York, Maine, New Hampshire, Massachusetts, DC, and Rhode Island. Connecticut, Delaware, Maryland, Virginia, and West Virginia have close to 50% of the properties with 60% or less LTV. And properties with 70% or more LTV in these five states are around a quarter. So for the states and LTVs that I didn't get into details, I'll publish the map on my website and Tableau profile so you can take a look by yourself. The general idea is that 70% LTV is probably the new standard in 2022. So looking at the blue and green tiers will tell you that the mortgage loan right now in the country is in a very strong position, which is very different from 2008. The map tells you that the major risk factor is not in the individual residential mortgage loans. And in fact, many properties are at least 30 to 40% crash proof. So the equity growth is actually higher than the loan growth. But this is not to say that the risk factor is out of the entire real estate market. In the next video, we're going to take a closer look at the foreclosure situation and keep digging. As always, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you on the next one.